Welcome to part 12 in this series of videos where we are creating a birthday reminders application using Blazor Server. So far, we've got an application where we can list uh, relatives and friends with their dates of birth and we can create emails that will send reminders to people about these birthdays. The only trouble is that we have to log in every day and send those emails. We obviously don't want to do that. It would be much better if we could use a background task that checked daily for forthcoming birthdays and automatically sent emails. After an extensive search, I've found Hangfire, and this seems to do what we need. So let's have a look at the C Sharp code and we'll set about adding Hangfire to our application. Hangfire comes as a NuGet package, so we'll uh, add that using the NuGet package manager. So tools, NuGet package manager, manage NuGet packages. And I'm going to search for Hangfire. And a number of application, number of packages appear here. The ones we need are core, ASP.NET core, and SQL Server. I'm not sure about this one called Hangfire. That doesn't seem to be necessary for a Blazor project. And the reason we're using SQL Server is because Hangfire needs tables to store information about jobs and therefore uses SQL Server. There is an alternative of using memory storage, uh, but since we're using SQL Server anyway, we'll install this one. So I'll now off screen uh, set about uh, installing these. Right, those three are now installed and we can see them there. To use Hangfire we need to make some changes to program.cs. Uh, so I'll close the NuGet package manager and open programs and the first thing we need is a couple of using statements. So I'll just paste those in here. So using Hangfire and because we're using SQL Server, hangfire.sql server. In the builder section, before the build, we need the following. And I've simply copied this from the Hangfire documentation. I'll put a link in that page in the description of the video. As I say, I've simply copied this from the documentation page. I have tried successfully to use Hangfire without those two lines and without this section down at the bottom. Uh, but since I don't know what effect those have, I'm going to keep those in because they're in the documentation. The other thing here is if you're using memory storage, Instead of SQL, you would substitute an alternative in here, such as use memory storage. I can't remember exactly what the, the code is, but it'd be similar to that. We're using SQL and I'm going to add the Hangfire tables into our birthdays database. So I'm using the same connection string. Uh, alternatively, you could put an all, uh, a different connection string into a different database. But as I say, I'm going to use the default. The first time that we run this, Hangfire will add the tables to SQL. So if we have a quick look at SQL at the moment, under the birthdays database, I'll just refresh it. Under tables, we've just got the person. Right back in here, we haven't quite finished. But before I go further, I would also just say or just mention that the reason I'm using the same database here for the Hangfire tables as our birthday tables is that I'm proposing eventually that I should deploy this to Azure. And in Azure, you're charged for uh, SQL databases. If I can keep everything within the same database, I will only be charged for one database. So that's just an aside about potential costs creeping in. Hangfire has a dashboard that allows you to see the jobs and to have access to that we need to add this line 
before the app run. And we can have access to this just by typing in slash dashboard to our base browser address. But it'd be much easier, I think, if we added this to the to the nav menu. Uh, so if we now look at the nav menu. And if we just copy this last bottom link. And change email test to dashboard. And put in here hang fire. We should be able to have an easy way of accessing the dashboard. Right, I'm now going to run the application. It's not going to do very much, uh, but we should see this new uh, dashboard appearing. So let's run it. So here's our birthday reminders. And the first thing you may have noticed is that I've cleaned up some of the data here. But we've now got Hangfire dashboard here. If I click on that, it opens up the Hangfire dashboard. I'll go into this in more detail when we've actually got something working, but we haven't got any background jobs running yet. So let's go back to the site and uh, we'll now close that and go back to the code. I'm going to go back to program CS and we're going to be putting some code in here. Hangfire can handle a number of different requirements. Briefly, these are fire and forget. These are their terms, I think. Typically, these are jobs that are fired only once. For example, a welcome email when a user signs up for a newsletter. Secondly, there's a delayed job. Essentially, these are the same as fire and forget, but is not actioned immediately. Maybe a reminder is sent a day or week or sometime later after someone signs up for a newsletter. Those are, those are used using background job dot schedule. And then we have recurring job. This is a job that needs to be repeated on a regular basis. The basis could be more or less any time span, every minute, hour, day, week, etc. For example, a report to be sent on the first day of the month to a manager notifying them how many people had signed up for a newsletter. Our email reminders will fall into that category. Then lastly, there's continuous job. And this is a job that will run on completion of another job. So it's a kind of chained set of uh, jobs. For example, a follow-up email after the news newsletter welcome email. So from those types, as, as I mentioned, uh, we will need to use the recurring job. But it might be worth some entering some code here to demonstrate the kind of jobs that we can do. So I'm just going to paste in the code that we need. So this is the code that we need, but I need to make one other change. I discovered that we've got that what I'm going to be doing here. Maybe I should explain first is that I'm going to be sending some emails. So I've got two background jobs and a recurring job. And the first one is just to say that the program has started. I'm sending them all to myself and I'm going to have subject and body. And I'm going to be using this, uh, the email service that we've already created to send these items. And this must be put in here to start the service before running this. That's, that's, that's one essential. The other thing that we need that I discovered is that further up, we have got the email service it is scoped. And I discovered that needs to be transient. So I'll just comment that one out. And I'll paste in the version that we need. And I've put in here, scope didn't seem to work. And now Singleton did work, um, but I've decided to use transient. So with that in place, 
when we run the application, it's going to send an email with the subject the program has started. Then we've got one that's sent after a particular time. So this is going to be sent after a minute. It's only going to be sent once and it's going to say welcome. This was sent one minute after starting and you'll hit see here we've now got time span and it's from minutes and the value is one. We could put that to, to be any value but this will demonstrate how that works. And then down here we've got a recurring job and that uh, is run every five minutes. This is the name of the recurring job and you'll notice these two don't have names. Uh, so this is run every five minutes and the subject is recurring email every five minutes and the body just says another five minutes has ticked by. And then we put in a cron expression. Um, I won't go into details on this again I'll put a link into how cron works uh, but you can see we've got slash five for every five minutes. And lastly this uh, recurring job and this is going to be the kind of instruction that we'll use for sending out our emails. So this says the, the name, the title is run every day at 1335 and the subject is recurring email every day at 1335. That's the body which will eventually will substitute with the proper email and then this is the cron. So that's 35 minutes past the 13th hour. Now I have discovered that this is UTC time. Um, it's now beginning of April in the UK. We use something called British Summertime, which is an hour ahead. Um, it's now about 10.50. Um, so I'm going to change this. So this runs at 10.57. I should be able to get it started by then. That's just a description that makes no difference at all. But this is again makes no difference, but that's what's going to appear. And in here we need that's the hour minutes. So that's 57 and the time 10. OK, well, I better get that running and then we'll have a look at my email as they come in. Right, so I've started the application and if I look in email, I can see we've now got one that says subject, the program has started at 10.53. It is now still 10.53. If we look at the application itself, which is this, if we look at the hang fire dashboard, uh, we can have a look and see what we've got here. So one has just been sent. Uh, that must be the one that's sent every minute. Um, and the, the top bit is a real time graph and this is the, the, the history. Um, we've got jobs. So no queued jobs at the moment. Uh, but we see we've got two that have succeeded a few seconds ago and a few minutes ago um, and occurring jobs we've got two <laughs> I've fallen into the trap again that one isn't going to be sent for an hour because it's using UTC I should have said 9.57 never mind uh, we'll see this one coming in every five minutes. If I go back to the site and go back to my emails, we've now got the program has started. That one's sent after a minute after starting and the first recurring email after every five minutes has gone. And that was at 10.55. Um, I'm going to away, go away and make myself a cup of coffee, cup of coffee and we'll come back in a few minutes time to see uh, whether we've had one at 11 o'clock and 11.05 or however long it takes me to make my cup of coffee. 
See you in a minute. It's now five or six minutes later and the 11 o'clock email has come in. And if we have a look at the Hangfire dashboard, we can see that we've had three successful items today, as well as the, the one that started. Um, so we've got one server, which is the local server. We've got two recurring jobs. So that five minute one happened two minutes ago and is due in another three minutes. And the hour one, sorry, the daily one isn't due for another hour roughly. Uh, we've had no need for retries and there are no queue jobs. So that shows the Hangfire dashboard. I'm going to close it now. And there's not very much to see on this. It's only the email that says another five minutes ticks by. Um, but this is where our birthday reminders would appear. The last thing is that if we look at the birthdays database and look at the tables again, if I now refresh that, we can see we've got the hang fire tables in here. Um, I'm not going to go into details about that. They're not really relevant. So the application is doing exactly what I want. Hangfire is installed. It's sending emails every five minutes. Uh, I'm sure the one that's going to go every day will run in another hour's time if I'd left the uh, application running. So next time we've got to start bringing some of these things together and hopefully be in a position to kick off our emails automatically. But that's for the next uh, video. Thank you very much for watching this. I'll put a link in the description uh, to relevant links, including the Hangfire documentation page. Thank you very much for watching and uh, the next video should be coming along shortly.